What's up, future respiratory therapists? Everybody's got finals coming up. It's that time of the year, and we need to talk about ABGs because I promise you, as you prepare for your board exams and your finals, you're going to have questions regarding ABGs. Now, the problem is, is that everybody says, oh, I'm good with interpreting ABGs, and that's fantastic if you are. But the interpretation is usually not the question. The question is usually, what are you going to do to fix this blood gas? That's what we're talking about in this video. Let's dive in. All right, so like I said, we're talking all about ABGs and not interpreting them, but what are you going to do to fix it? Okay, so anytime you're giving an arterial blood gas, specifically arterial blood gas values, you're going to have to ask yourself, is this a ventilation problem or is this an oxygenation problem? That's where you want to start because if you start there, then you're going to be better prepared to be able to answer the question correctly. So uh, we simply ask ourselves, do we need to ventilate or do we need to oxygenate? Well, let's look at this blood gas here to begin with. What we see is, is that we have a pH of 7.22. We have a CO2 of 58 millimeters of mercury, we have a PaO2 of 80 millimeters of mercury, a normal bicarb, and a saturation of 97%. Now, what we know right off the bat is that this is a problem, this is a problem, this is normal. So, right here, we know that we have normal oxygenation. We have a ventilation problem. You see, this CO2 being elevated is causing this decrease in the pH, and we have a normal bicarb. So we know right now that for this patient, because the problem lies here, causing an acidosis, that we need to ventilate this patient. Now that's very different than if we look at this scenario over here, where we see a pH of 7.38, that is normal. We see a CO2 of 42, that is normal. We see a PaO2 of 50 millimeters of mercury. This is decreased. Normal bicarb, saturation of 81%. Why is our saturation 81%? Because we are hypoxemic. Now, do we have a ventilation problem here? No. This is fine and this is fine. We're not worried about this. What we need to do for this patient is to fix the oxygenation problem. So, so we see where we have two different scenarios here. This patient needs mechanical ventilation. pH is less than 7.25. We got it. We, we have to, to, to mechanically ventilate this patient. Probably need to intubate and put them on a vent. Now, this patient over here, do we need to intubate and put them on a vent? Probably not because their ventilation is okay. The problem here is that they are hypoxemic. So we can try to keep this patient off the vent by providing them with supplemental oxygen. And so this patient may just need to go on a, um, let's say a, 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 a 40 or a 50% venturi mask, or maybe a high flow nasal cannula at 40 or 50%. We just need to get this PaO2 up to help them oxygenate better. We do not need to mechanically ventilate this patient because they're getting rid of CO2 just fine. It's the oxygenation that's the problem. Now, those are pretty simple scenarios, right? But it goes beyond that. And so let's look at this next round because we oftentimes know that there typically and oftentimes are multiple disturbances. So what happens when it's both the CO2 and the O2 that are out of normal range and present with a problem. Well, let's take it down. Let's break down this first example here first. So we have a pH here that is decreased. We have a CO2 that is increased. Does this patient have a ventilation disturbance? The answer is yes. The PaO2 is 50 millimeters of mercury. That's low. Also, their saturation is low because of that and their bicarb is normal so we're not concerned about the bicarb right now so what we know is that we have a patient who is acidotic due to the high co2 level and they are also hypoxemic 
So now you have to figure out what am I going to do here? Am I going to fix the CO2 problem? Am I going to ventilate first or am I going to oxygenate first? Well, in this scenario, when you have ventilation and oxygenation disturbances, you have to ask yourself what's going on from a physiological standpoint. Why is this patient hypoventilating and why are they hypoxemic? Well, here's what it comes down to. We have to remember that hypoxemia can be the result of hypoventilation. There's your answer. Why is the patient hypoxemic? Because they are hypoventilating. This patient may be an example of a patient who has received an excessive amount of narcotics and their respiratory rate might, might be four or five or six breaths per minute. They are hypoventilating, which is also going to lead to hypoxemia. So what do we do here? We would fix the ventilation first because the ventilation is likely the cause of the hypoxemia. So we say, makes sense, right? 100%. So you're telling me, Joe, to fix ventilation first if there's ever both problems. That's not what I'm saying, because when we look over here, we see that we have a high pH, we have a low CO2, we have hypoxemia here, so a low PaO2, 80% because of that hypoxemia, normal bicarb, we're not concerned about that. So ventilation disturbance as well as an oxygenation disturbance. What are we going to do here? Fix the ventilation first. Stop right there. Go back to normal physiology. What happens when a patient becomes hypoxemic? Do they breathe faster? Or do they breathe slower? Remember, the peripheral chemoreceptors kick in and they say, hey, you got to up this minute ventilation because we need more oxygen. When you increase minute ventilation, CO2 goes down, pH goes up. So this patient is hyperventilating because they are hypoxemic. So what are you going to fix first? The problem. Fix the oxygen first and they'll stop hyperventilating. So you have to think through these things to really understand what is causing what. If you go back over here to this example, I'll clean this up for you here just a little bit. If you go back to this example over here and you say, okay, Joe, well, how come the PaO2 wasn't the problem here? How come we didn't fix oxygenation first here where we did here? Again, in the presence of hypoxemia, the patient's response will be to breathe faster, to try to pull more oxygen in. If that's the case, then CO2 will go down and pH will go up. But that's not what happened here. You see, this patient has a high CO2 with a low acidotic pH, which makes this the problem causing this. Very different than what's happening over here. This is the problem causing our patient to hyperventilate. CO2 goes down, causing our pH to go up. So you, you have to just stop and work through them. This is really the only scenario where you will start and fix oxygen before ventilation. Is when a patient, I'm going to say this again, when a patient is hyperventilating, creating an alkalosis, in response to hypoxemia, fix the oxygen first. Everything else will be fix the ventilation first. Okay, now we have to look beyond CO2 because you say, okay, well, if I could just look at the CO2, then I can kind of figure out what's going on here, right? If I just, if I have a high CO2, then I need to ventilate. Not always, because let's take a look at these two examples. Here, we have a high CO2 causing a decreased pH. Our PaO2 is normal. We're not worried about that. Bicarb is normal. We're not worried about that. Saturation normal. We're not worried about that. This CO2 is causing the acidotic pH. This person needs mechanical ventilation. 
How's that different than this patient? They both have a CO2 of 58. But you see, look what's different here. This patient has a pH of 7.38. Oh, that's a normal pH, Joe. Over here, we're acidotic, but here, we're normal. Well, why are we normal here, but not on this side? Because we go down and find that our bicarb is elevated. What does this tell us? This tells us that our bicarb is elevated because this process has been happening for some time. Now, you know I'm going to quote Egan's 12th edition. This is out of page uh, 296. What it says is, is the rule of thumb, compensatory responses of the lungs to acid-base disturbances normally occurs within seconds. You see, the, the lungs respond very, very quickly. They'll adjust that CO2 very quickly to try to compensate for a metabolic disturbance. But compensatory responses of the kidneys occur within hours or days. You see, this process here has been happening for a long time. Now, of course, you need more information to know, okay, well, what's, how do we know this isn't a metabolic disturbance? Well, let me give you a little scenario here. This patient presents pursed lip breathing, barrel chest, digital clubbing with a 40 pack year uh, smoking history. Guess what you just heard? COPD. And now you have a blood gas that supports chronic hypercapnia, which explains the elevated bicarb. It also explains the high CO2 as well as the normal pH. You see, this patient <laughs> is playing bingo somewhere right now. You don't, you don't need to intubate this patient. You don't need to help them get that CO2 back down into normal range because their CO2 is normal for them. And so you always have to look at the pH. It's not just the CO2 level. The pH is also very, very important in figuring out if that CO2 is normal for this patient or if it's high causing an acidosis, meaning we need to intervene. Do not intervene here, 100% intervene here because of the difference right here. Normal, acidotic, this person needs help. Now, you may be looking at this going, you know what, Joe, you're right, I I'm tracking with all of that, but I'm kind of worried about this 60 right here. Well, also remember that patients who live with chronic hypercapnia, typically will also live with chronic hypoxemia. Saturation of 90%, I'm not fixing anything on this patient. This patient is going to stay right here, just like that. Like I said, they're out playing bingo right now somewhere. So this person needs no interventions where this person needs some care. Now, I got one more thing here to share with you um, because now you understand, right? Now you're going, okay, it's not just CO2. It's also pH. So if my pH is acidotic and my CO2 is abnormal, then it must be a, a reason to ventilate the patient. Not always, okay? Because it's not always a respiratory disturbance. Again, go back to Egan's. By convention, in blood gas classification, metabolic refers to non-ventilatory processes and respiratory refers to ventilatory processes and disturbances. So we, we realize here that we have to not just ask ourselves, do we need to ventilate or oxygenate? But we also have to ask ourselves, is this a respiratory problem or is this a metabolic problem? So let's take a look at these blood gases here. Uh, again, we see this high CO2 and this low pH. So we look at it and we go, okay, this CO2 is causing the pH to be acidotic. PaO2 is 80. We're not worried about that. That's normal. Bicarb, 24, normal. We're not worried about this. Our saturations are fine. This doesn't matter. Here's the problem right here. You see, this patient, again, needs ventilatory support because it is a respiratory acidosis. High CO2, low pH. But flip over here, look at the pH. The pHs are equal, 7.22.
So both of them need to be intubated. Not necessarily, because what we see is when we look at our CO2, it is decreased. You see, we have a low CO2. So how is a low CO2 causing an, uh, an acidotic pH? That, that, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't jive. So when I see this right off the bat, 722 and 28, I know that my bicarb must be low. Because the only way I can be acidotic with a low CO2 is if we are compensating for metabolic acidosis. And sure enough, we come down here and here's our bicarb. It is decreased. You see, when bicarb goes down, pH follows it. So this bicarb is causing the acidosis on the pH side and the CO2 the respiratory system within seconds is trying to compensate for this metabolic disturbance. Now, do we need to ventilate this patient? Probably not. We need to identify the root cause of the metabolic acidosis and fix that. Now, typically the answer might be to give bicarb, but I'm going to caution you, giving bicarb is not always the answer to fix a metabolic acidosis. It is one of the answers, but it is not always the correct answer. Things like lactic acid, things like diabetic ketoacidosis, those things, giving bicarb will not fix the problem. It will just mask the pH. And so we, we, we understand, and that's a different topic for a different day, but, but that's the difference. What's causing the acidosis? Here, it's metabolic. Here, it's respiratory. Who are you going to ventilate? The respiratory patient, not the metabolic patient. Fix the metabolic disturbance that'll fix your patient. That's kind of the nuts and bolts of what you need to know for arterial blood gases in, in, in addressing these questions that you are going to be asked where you get given arterial blood gas information, they're not going to ask you to interpret it, maybe a few. Most of them are going to be, what do you want to do for this patient? And now you know. Hey, I'm a respiratory coach. Come check out the Respiratory Coach Academy. I have a, 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 a course over there that's completely free where you can gain access to, to a lot of different resources and cheat sheets that I make available and post into that section occasionally. Uh, you can also find the TMC boot camp there so that you can pass that TMC exam on your first attempt at the high cut score. Go check that out. And then also, after you pass the TMC, you gotta pass the CSE to get registered. CSE boot camp right there talks all about mindset. How are you going to prepare for this exam and understand what they're throwing at you? Also, two courses over here, starting with basic arterial blood gas, what we just talked about, and also respiratory therapy, pharmacology to help you in that very difficult course. All righty, we're going to wrap this up. You're here already on YouTube. Do me a favor. Hit the like button, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I would love to hear uh, your feedback on this video. Instagram at Respiratory Coach, TikTok at Respiratory Coach, and LinkedIn at Joe Lewis. Come follow me over there. And then finally, if you have any questions, send me an email, respiratorycoach at gmail.com. I would love to converse with you, talk to you, come speak at your state convention, whatever I can do to aid you along your educational journey. That's what I'm here for. Remember, at the end of the day, average is easy. It's so easy. Don't be it.